This week, we're going to be resurrecting the Zeiss Icon Super Icon to A, and we're going to be using it to do an Ophelia inspired shoot in the local stream. So this is a 1934 Zeiss Icon Super Icon to A model 530. It's one of the first ever Super Icons it's produced, but it's also one of the first 645 cameras produced. I've given myself two days to recommission this paperweight, which probably hasn't been a camera in 50 years. With the viewfinder jinked, lens filthy, the rangefinder binding, and the bellows hold, it's going to be quite a challenge. Before trying anything with a camera like this, we need to clean it and check a few things. I'm using a bit of isopropyl alcohol and some cotton buds. And yes, I always work this fast. The lens turned out to be more than dirty and heavily fungused up. It had to be disassembled and cleaned out with hydrogen peroxide and ammonia. And with all the grossness gone from the lens, it was time to check out the bellows. To check the bellows, shine a torch through them. If you're able to shine a torch through them, bad luck, you're going to have to patch or replace the bellows. I tend to fix my bellows with cloth wiring loom tape. It's flexible, sticks well, and is totally opaque, and it's about six pounds a roll. Now, up until now, with all the pre-war cameras that I've been using, none of them have had any focusing aids. The Super Icon to had a rangefinder linked to the focus on the lens. They called it autofocus. When you look through this window here, you see the two images overlaid on each other. When the images overlay perfectly, you know that you're in focus. But unfortunately, the system on this camera has been binding, and every time it slipped, it would get more inaccurate. With all the parts in the rangefinder working again, I was going to have to recalibrate it. To do that, I made a faux ground glass out of lighting diffusion, which I loaded in the back of the camera like film. I was then able to focus on an object at a measured distance, where I found the numbers on the lens were still accurate. I then focused the rangefinder and moved the prisms round so it focused in the same place as the lens. If it's not sharp, I'm going to myself. We managed to get the rangefinder accurate to within six to eight inches, which isn't bad, but it's enough to throw your focus still. The Zeiss Icon Company began in 1926 with the merger of four of Germany's biggest camera makers under the assistance of the Zeiss Company. The Icons were early high-end roll film cameras. Before that, the semi-pro market was mostly glass plates and roll film was the domain of the box cameras. The Super Iconters were high quality cameras that could give you repeatable control and the new 645 format gave you 15 shots to a roll, all this in a camera that you could fit in your pocket. This represented a massive shift in photography, making high quality images more accessible and all for around £21 in 1934, which is around £1,500 in today's money. After the war and the restoration of German industry, Zeiss Icon continued to serve both the professional and amateur markets. But as the 1950s draw to a close, it was clear that the writing was on the wall for folding cameras. The Super Icon tour was discontinued in 1960. Zeiss Icon continued producing cameras throughout the 1960s, but it just couldn't compete with the wave of good quality cameras coming from Japan, and Zeiss Icon finally folded in 1972. The first thing that you notice is that the landscape orientation is where portrait usually is and portrait, vice versa, is where landscape usually is, which is quite strange and takes a little while to get used to. Loading the icon is pretty straightforward. Put your film in, move your take-up spool into the take-up spool position, load it on, start to wind it through. The Iconta was one of the first 645 cameras. Film at the time had no provision for 645 numbers on it. So the makers placed two windows on the back of the camera to make use of the 6x9 markings on the film. Once you've loaded the film, you wind it on until the number one appears in the lower window. You then take your picture and wind the number one into the upper window. You take another picture, you wind number two into the lower window, and then you take another picture and you wind number two into the upper window, and so on and so forth.
Okay, go up. Okay, hold it, set. I didn't cut the shaft. Sorry. Can I come down? I'm almost. This camera is pain in it. Because I'm wiggling. All cameras are a pain in the ass. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yes, these old cameras will definitely keep you or your model on their toes. You need to work in a specific order, much like a large format camera. So you must wind the film on and cock the shutter before you try and focus on your subject. Because if you focus on your subject before you cock the shutter, you'll then move the camera around cocking the shutter and then you'll have to refocus. Winding the film on in this camera is pretty tricky. If you're in a low light situation, which you really should be if you're using the windows with modern film, it's very difficult to see the numbers, especially the number one. And if you wind it past or don't get it accurate, your images are going to overlap or you're going to lose pictures on your roll. We're going to send Jamie swimming in the water and we're going to try to take pictures on it with this. She's so excited, don't you think? Yeah, she's really excited about it. Yeah, the pictures are going to be great because they're going to be super in focus and this camera hasn't given me any trouble today whatsoever. <gasps> oh! Look how wet I got. I mean, come on. You gotta suffer for your art, right? They look good, I mean, they're very nice negatives. So on the shoot, I did whinge about this camera quite a lot. And now I owe it an apology. When the negs came out of the wash, it was apparent that this was something really special. The 86-year-old Zeiss Tessar lens was absolutely stunning in its character. It's slightly soft, it flares beautifully, but it has exactly the kind of look that's really fashionable right now. So while the camera is a little bit finicky to use, the results you get are something truly unique. And this camera is definitely worth a second chance. If you want to see all the shots from this shoot, you can follow me on Instagram. If you'd like to share your images, I've created an Ollitography Facebook group, which you can join. So until next week, like, share, sub and shoot, and I'll see you in the next video.